Oh, I love book sales. They just crank my G golly motor, don't you know? Mom, Mom, I want to get new books too. Can I? Can I? Perhaps you would like to join our storytelling group. It will give you a chance to sit down and cool your busy little jets. Oh, a little quiet story time. Doesn't that just sound like fun there now? No. Welcome to our story circle, boys and girls. Now, who has a favorite story they'd like to hear? I have a favorite story. I do, I do. And your name is? Bobby. All right, Bobby. If you tell me the name of your favorite story, I'll see if I have it here. This is a really good story, okay? It's about Thanksgiving, and... Uh, Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> when I asked you about your favorite story, I meant a story that was written down. That's okay. You don't have to write it down. I have it all in my head. I remember exactly how it happened. Mom made me a pilgrim costume because I was in the play at school. Don't forget your pilgrim's hat. That's the best part of the whole shooting match. Woo! I bet she'll say I look cute in this thing. Oh, will you look at how gee golly cute you are there now yet? Told you. Everybody was excited about the play. Our family was really excited. Because right after the play, we were going to drive to Flagpole, Arizona in a brand new van that Dad had just bought. We were going to visit Grandma and Grandpa Jenneric for Thanksgiving. Jerome. Why are you dressed like that? My teacher said to come dressed in a costume. Some people just don't get it. Hi, Bobby. Want to my line? When we think of Thanksgiving, we think of turkey. I'll never forget it. I memorized it. That's very professional, Bobby. Some of the kids are coming over to my house after the play. You want to come? We're leaving right after the play to go to Flagpole, Arizona for Thanksgiving. Everybody's sorry about it but me. I want to stay home and do what we always do, because doing something else might not be any fun. Hey, what's with Clark? Oof! I hate this dumb hat. What are you doing, Clark? Hiding. I've never been in a play before, and I'm scared. But there's nothing to be scared about. That's why they call it a play, because it's supposed to be fun. There's too many people. Uh-oh. I think I'm scared. Ow! Um, um, when we think of Thanksgiving, um... Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Well, doesn't that beat all? We're in the wrong row here, then. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse, me. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me! When we think of Thanksgiving, we think of turkey. There. Oh, Howard, get this precious moment on camcorder for the cry eye. Look over here, Albert. Marcy, wave to Mommy. Here I am. Look over here, Bobby. Over here, son. This is great. Look at that, Bobby. Okay, now do. Do something cute. Hey, I guess parents are made to be embarrassing. Bye, Bobby. See ya. That was another embarrassing thing. How far away Dad parked? Because we had a new car. Stupid hat. How much further, Howard? Not far. Oh, for corn sakes, where'd you park, Howard? On a desert island? Desert island? I'm just slowing you down, don't you know? <gasps> Go on without me. No, Mom. We're going to the new car, and we're going to get there together. What in the Sam Hills of Wisconsin is that? A Futurama. Isn't it a beauty? It was designed for nothing but comfort. Oh! 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 Do I have to hold Roger the whole way? You'll all have to take turns with Roger on your lap. Uh, uh, and watch out for the cooler back there. I don't want anybody knocking over my corn pudding, don't you know? <laughs> Mom, does Bobby have to wear this stupid hat? It's totally taking up all the room. 
all of a sudden, I was really starting to like my hack. <laughs> Mom! What are you trying to do, Aunt Ruth? Well, I can't for the life of me figure out how to turn this halogen-powered state-of-the-art reading light on, Bobby. Maybe you have to push one of these buttons. Woo-hoo-hoo-hee-hee! <laughs> yeah! Run, Run Roger, shut out! Off me! Oh, oh, that's all over it, you dear. Oh. Okay, everybody, we have a long trip ahead of us, so I suggest that we all just sit back and enjoy traveling in the van of the future. The van of the future? This is great! Uh-oh, stop! Gotta go to the bathroom. Not now! Wait! What happened in outer space? Yeah, did you ever get to your grandmama's house? I really can't say. And why is that, Bobby? Gotta go to the bathroom! But I'll tell you the rest when I come back. <laughs> I'm back! I'm sure we're all glad to have Bobby back, but now, how about the story of how Mr. and Mrs. Blue Jay built their nest? No, I want to hear Bobby's story! No, I want to hear Bobby's story! Bobby's Bobby! 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 In that case, why don't you finish your story, dear? Okay. Uh... Where was I? You were in the van of the future in outer space. Yeah. So this is the rest of what happened. <laughs> what was happening? Were you getting hit by a monster meteor shower? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. A monster meteor shower. Go left, Dad. Go right. No left. Dive right under the big one. What, well, Bobby? For corn's sakes, hold it down there. You're driving everybody crazy with that jiggly talk in there. I can't help it, Mom. My seat's shaking and I can't make it stop. Knock it off, Bobby. Sorry, Kelly. Wow, cool. I look totally Courtney Love. <laughs> Something really bad had happened. Dad had left early so he could avoid being stuck in traffic, and now we were stuck with all the other people who left early so they wouldn't get stuck in traffic. I knew we should have stayed home and done what we always do on Thanksgiving. I knew doing something new would be no fun. Oh, look on the bright side, Bobbo. By the time the sun comes up, we'll be at the Sox and the Cam Museum and be first in line for the guided tour. Oh, no, nobody's going on any tours, Ted. Get the maps, Martha. We're gonna have to reroute the whole trip. We should be able to make better time going north. Yeah, yeah, north is up, right? Sure, yeah, you bet. Okay, let's take a look-see here and make a battle plan then, yeah. A battle plan? This is war. It's us against the other cars. We'll fight them on highways, on the off-ramps, and in the carpool lanes. We'll fight and we'll win. Right. I see we'll get off on this loss and exit, hang her right at the Grass Valley cutoff, and beat every other car in the road. Too boring. I say we win with gadgets. What do you say, General Bobby? I say... I don't know how much more of this my corn pudding can take. Howard, I need fresh ice. We're minutes away from Clot and Curdle here. <laughs> Some fried fruit on a stick, some grease jerky. No, and no, and don't ask me about any other G Golly junk food either. Oop. Okay, then can I ask you about how come most of the people here have more fingers than teeth? Mute your bugle, Bobby. Let's go round up a bag of cubes. This is great. I'm getting all my Christmas shopping done in one place. I didn't get any petrified dinosaur fur I wanted, and we still had a long time to go before we got to Grandma and Grandpa's house. 
I was starting to really not like this trip. But then I saw something that made me feel a lot better. Kelly was gonna drive. And that was good because she always drives really fast. Hold it right there! Kelly never even made it out of the parking lot. How's it going, Bubbo? Not so good, Uncle Ted. There's nothing to do in here, and it's too dark to see anything out there. I was just thinking about how we're all alone in our little van out here, and how the pilgrims were all alone out on the ocean in their little boat, both of us trying to get somewhere and wondering how long it was going to take. Yeah, just like the pilgrims. Yo ho ho, are we there yet? Okay, so we've been at sea for two months, and like this ocean air is making my hair totally frizz, okay? Never fear, Pilgrim Kelly. With Captain Bobby at the helm, we'll be there before you know it. I've got a corn pudding here that's not long for this world, you know. Let's see a little less show and a lot more gee golly go, Captain Bobby. You've got it, Pilgrim Mom. Whoops, that's an upset stomach. <laughs> Oh, big pardon. What's the matter, Uncle Ted? Oh, not feeling so good, Bobbo. Must have been that six-pack of jumbo extra spicy garlic chili cheese corn dogs I ate while I was doing my shopping, you think? Oh, Ted, why don't you let me get behind the wheel for a while? That sounds like a great idea, Ruthie. It sounded like a great idea, but it wasn't. <laughs> Say, I, ca I can't believe this, Ruth. Dad was pretty mad, but he was really mad when he couldn't get the van started. Oh, for crying out loud, Ruth! You left the lights on, and now the battery's dead. Yep, we were all alone, stuck in the middle of nowhere. <gasps> and you know what that means? We were in trouble. Yep. Our car was broken down in the middle of nowhere, and we were in big trouble. But this is taking a really long time, so maybe you want to talk now. No, no, no. My story can wait. I want to find out what happened to you. Well, that's when things started to get exciting. <laughs> oh, what in the name of 24-hour roadside assistance are we going to do now, then? Yeah. Okay, here's the plan. Derek and Bobby and I can go and try to find a phone somewhere and we'll call for help. H hold it right there, Miss Spandex Pants. If we're going to be lost in the wilderness, you're going to stay put so we can all be lost together, don't you know? I wasn't exactly sure what Mom was saying, but I knew one thing. Together or alone, we were lost. I can't believe this, Ted. Yep, it's true, Howard. We're right smack dab in the heart of Indian country. We are? How do you know, Uncle Ted? Well, I saw the same road in that TV movie of the week last week. You know, the, the one about the group of Indians who were taken over by space aliens and then later on... Indians! Indians! Who might really be aliens! Wow. Uh, you must have seen drums along the Milky Way. I watched it with my Uncle Ted. Are you aliens or real Indians? Native Americans is the politically correct term, son. But you can call me Douglas. And I'm Franklin. And I'm Bobby. And I'm American, too. Nice to meet you, Bobby. Hi, I'm Howard Jenerick. And, and boy, am I glad to see you. The battery's dead. Uh, can I borrow some jumper cables? Sorry, I don't have any. And there's no gas stations around here. But I can offer you a tow to my family's place. We were just on the way there for Thanksgiving. Well, thanks a lot. That, that would be great. Yep. Franklin and Douglas were going to take us to their house. And just wait till you see where they lived. Wow. Look at 
all these neat Indian teepees. Is this where you live? Although a lot of Native Americans lived in wigwams, not all of them used homes like these. Actually, this is a hotel. It belongs to our grandfather. How else would he get plumbers to come over on Thanksgiving? <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good one. Hey, hey, I've got one for you. What did the plumber say when he pulled the rabbit out of the sink? Hair in the drain. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> hey, who knew that one? <laughs> you got any others? As soon as we checked into our teepee room, Mom made everybody start taking showers. And Franklin's wife gave us big towels to wear while our clothes were being washed in the motel laundry. Sorry, I can't find jumper cables anywhere. It's Thanksgiving and everybody's out of town. But tomorrow's another day. In the meantime, my family would like to invite you to join us for dinner. Thanksgiving with Indians? Yay! Yay! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rain it in there, Bobby. You know, we don't want to be a bother, you know. It's no bother. We'd really like to have you. And my wife makes a great pumpkin pie. Oh, pumpkin pie? Count me in for a slice. Good. Well, as soon as you get dressed, we'll eat. Well, let's get some fresh clothes and get going. I am starved. No can do, Howard. The suitcases are locked, and I think I lost all the keys. Whoa! Uh, like, what is happening here? Well... Bobby looks so cheekily cute in his costume. I thought it'd be a real kick in the pants if we all dressed up for Grandma. <laughs> I didn't count on having to wear them for strangers, is all. Sometimes moms don't know when to stop when it comes to holidays. You didn't say it was Dress up, Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm changing. Yeah, well, let me just explain away the costumes. We were going down to visit my father and... No explanations necessary. We have a few of our own traditions around here. I, I forgot what ceremony this is for, but I love the colors. Uncle Hoover's getting on in years. He has trouble remembering a lot of things. Somebody call the chief. We're about to eat. A real Indian chief is coming? He's my grandpa. Don't wait for me. I'll be there by dessert. Did you know, Bobby, in the old days, we used to talk to each other using drums. Really? What's the drum saying? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Not really, just a little Indian humor there. <laughs> Oh, please have some corn pudding. I make it every year because it's my Howard's all-time favorite. No, not me, Mar Martha. I've, I've never liked corn pudding that much. Oh, well, then it must be Kelly's favorite then yet. Not hardly. Corn gives me total indigestion. Oh, sorry, sis, but uh, that stuff really bursts my gas bubble. Well, for Oshkosh's sakes, I guess I just won't make it anymore then. Oh, oh, don't be silly, Martha. It wouldn't it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without it. It's a it's a generic tradition. Is the turkey coming soon? We don't have turkey at Thanksgiving, Bobby. We eat fish. It's a tradition in our family. Franklin, you give the blessing. This Indian blessing is one that my family has said for many years. We are thankful for all the gifts of life, for the bounty of the earth. Wow. A real Indian Thanksgiving. We are thankful for the cool water that soothes our thirst and for the green grass which nourishes our animals. We are thankful for the trees of the forest which give us shade. We are thankful for the beautiful song of the birds and for the warm rays of the sun and for the bright stars in the night sky. And we are thankful for all the lessons that we have learned from those who have lived before us. And that's how the Indians we had Thanksgiving with said the blessing before dinner. And the next day, they helped us fix our van, and we got back home all safe and sound. And the Thanksgiving I thought was going to be terrible because it was going to be different turned out to be really, really great. That was a wonderful Thanksgiving story, Bobby. Thanksgiving story? 